Hello, everybody. Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. Today is Monday, April 8th, the start of a new week. And we got a lot of stuff to cover, but we're going to keep it short and to the point. We're going to start off looking at the S&P 500, the SPY, the Spider ETF. And I wanted to call out here on last week's Thursday, big volume sell-off where we gapped up and closed at the low. We had talked about the possibilities of reaching down lower or snapping back and seeing some consolidation until this day's kind of forgotten about. And really what we're seeing right now is exactly that take place. We had a strong move up on the last day of the week. And today to start off the week, we had very, very low volumes. So declining volume and price actions tightening up. This right here is an inside trading candle. It's another inside trading candle right here. So a break of the high could produce a pop to the upside and a break below this can produce a pop to the downside. So that's what I would be looking for. Price action, it expands and then it contracts. Going into Wednesday is when we have some important data. So we're going to cover what that data specifically is. So on Wednesday, we have core inflation data. We have so CPI data. We have some Fed speaking. We have some auctions. We have FOMC minutes. On Thursday, we have PPI data. And then even Tuesday, we have some bill auctions, note auctions as well. And this stuff can bring volatility to the markets. Now, we were looking at the week to date chart for the SPX in other prior episodes. And we've been talking about how the weekly 5 EMA has been held really since, I mean, the last time we closed below it was this week over here in October of the prior year. And this is an interesting point here is because we started to see a lot of volatility from an implied volatility perspective this week and the prior week. So these two weeks, we saw huge expected moves and we haven't seen one of that size until this week. So we it marked a turning point last time. Now, it's not to say that this is going to come down or going to go higher or what the case is going to be, but it is pointing out that there's a high probability that we tag either the upper or the lower expected move. So it's going to be important to know those from a risk management standpoint. So if we continue on, you'll look at the weekly expected move for the SPX. The upper weekly expected move is 52.90. Below us is 51.18. So we're looking at roughly an $86 expected move. And like I said, we haven't seen the likes of that for quite some time. So what is driving this implied volatility? Well, it could be because we have CPI. It could be because we saw some tensions between Israel and Iran. It could be because we have earnings also starting on Friday. So if you take a look here, we get the likes of JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, City, and so forth down the list. These are going to be the big ones. The financials are the ones that kick it off, kick the earnings season off first. And then we go into full gear and we have the bigger earnings. So we're going to be keep on monitoring this on my live streams. We'll talk about expected moves on my other videos. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't. We'll talk about what the market's pricing and as far as risk goes there too as well. Now, as we're going into this CPI report, I did find something interesting today on the Fed fund futures. This is, hey, are the Fed probabilities of the Fed keeping rates where they're at, raising or cutting? And you'll see here, this is the dates, right? So you got the May meeting, June meeting, and May is the next meeting, okay? And there's a 94% probability is what it's telling us that we're going to keep rates where they are, so higher for longer. And then you look out to June and this changed. We were looking at a rate cut, but today it has changed where the higher probability is that we actually keep rates where they are for June and we don't start to see the probability shift for the first rate cut into July. Now, my question is, it's going to be highly determined about what data comes out, whether that be unemployment data or inflation data, to really determine if that is just a bump in the road that we've been seeing take place. And that's what the Fed had mentioned on the prior meeting conference that they had had. So this right now, we went from, you know, six or seven rate cuts this year. And now the market's saying, no, we're looking at one, two rate cuts to the end of the year. So a big shift. And we haven't really seen the market respond all too much because of that. If I show you this, this is the two-year. I found it interesting today that both the two-year and the 10-year, the ones that I, I was watching today, both hit new year-to-date highs. And on the two-year right here, what I'm doing is I'm overlaying, because this one tracks the Fed fund futures the, cl the closest, and it's almost like a leading indicator for what the Fed will do. You'll see the two-year yield rises here, and then we start the rate hike cycle. You know, it cuts, it, it drops, and then all of a sudden we pause, and then we go 
uh, we go into a rate cut cycle, right? We rose and then we started moving higher with the Fed Fund Futures. The Fed Fund Futures is the more straighter line. And what you'll notice here is when the two-year yield crosses underneath the Fed Fund Futures, that's typically where we start to pause, right? We've seen that many times dating back over here to 2000 on this chart. So this was to the dot-com bubble. A great financial crisis. Even here in 2018, going into 2019, you can see it cross underneath, and then we we continue that pause. And you know, today we hit another year year to date high, but we're still far off that 5.25. So this to me signals that we'll probably keep rates. If this keeps on pressing up higher, we'll probably just keep rates higher for longer. But at some point, right, if this starts coming down, we will start beginning that cut a rate cut cycle. So this is an early indication, like we've seen in prior times. And each of these times, you'll notice that the Fed moved quick. Something had happened where something snapped, something broke, where the Fed had to step in. And one of the tools that they used was slamming rates back down. You can see the 10-year yield right here is at 4.42. Okay. For some reason, my TNX wasn't loading, so I had to pull it up this way. But we're at a new year-to-date high. And you might be thinking, this is typically bad for various markets. Um, sometimes it's great for financial stocks, which we'll pull up. But right, we're going into earnings here soon. But you'll see... If you look at the S&P 500 and long-term yield correlation, we're looking at a 10-day in green, and then in the blue is a 30-day correlation. It's actually currently positive right now. It spends most of its time in negative territory, at least the 30-day correlation. So a rising 10-year yield, more importantly, the rate of change at which it rises has been negative on various markets, but beneficial for some, like for example, energy, right? Crude oil and, and energy stocks. And we've talked about on prior videos what that looks like from a relative performance standpoint and how that can affect the markets when you see rising yield, rising oil, and so forth. We take a look at the SPY on the 15 minute time frame today, right? We're just contracting, right? We didn't do much, we're contracting. We are, we're below a five day moving average by a little bit and it is starting to decline. So not only are we below a five day moving average, if we bring up gamma, we're actually, let me pull up Ganda, the Wanda where I have my gamma levels on here. If we pay attention to the gamma flip line, which is currently at 52.30 on the close, we're in negative gamma territory, right? We're below a five-day moving average. So right now, this is a time to be much more cautious, at least for the way that I trade for swing trading. There are a lot of good setups, and I'm going to be talking about a couple of them maybe a little bit later, or I'm just going to record the second half for the Discord on the various names that I see that are setting up as it stands right now. Okay, so when I go into tomorrow's trading session, I'd be still paying attention to this 5250 because if you look across the screen here, this has been that magnet that we keep breaking from, but it keeps on sucking it like right back in. And we're not too far off of it. So we have the gamma flip line, 5240 and 5250, where it would be some important gamma levels. So this could act as a, a level of resistance. And if we start continuing to break up further, 5300 would be the call wall. So I'll pull, I'll pull it up and I'll show you what I mean. 5300 is right here and you can see that it's going to be hard to get past this level because we're not really reaching out further right we're seeing some reaching out but not too much and then as we're right here 5250 there's not much beneath us so the longer we stay below 5250 in my opinion that's not a good sign we need to get back above it to feel a little bit more confident from a bullish perspective we won't know what this really looks like until around april 19th or coming after april 19th because that is going to be a big option expiration if i look at op option expiration by strike here we have sorry not by strike if i look by percent by total you'll see february 19th is when we get most of the gamma rolling off here even by you know monday um, sorry, not Monday. On Yeah, we don't really have much going on until February the 19th is when we get that. And we'll really kind of see where traders begin to reach after that option expiration. If we take a look here now at the 11 sectors that make up the S&P 500, what did we have play out today? Really just rate sensitive stuff, right? Real estate did well and utilities and then financial. So this was a rate sensitive day as we hit those highs, right? Yields went higher, same with various financials. And if I pull up financial names, you can look at, you know, Schwab. I mean, these these look good. They're coming into earnings, so we got to be careful. But we're seeing breakouts and then nice consolidations, right? Charles Schwab, Bank of America was one that we looked at over in this area. And this is kind of just consolidating here sideways. Wells Fargo is another one that is going sideways, consolidating here very nicely too as well. But earnings is around the corner. And, you know, it's going to be, and we have also not only earnings, but we have CPI and CPI can have an effect obviously on the rate market and the dollar and so forth. So I think financials look really good here 
but it's just uh, you got to you got to proceed with caution and really understand what those expected moves are going to give us as far in terms of risk go. So let's take a look at a couple other things. I want to look at some commodities. So, for example, copper. This is where it gets very pretty interesting is we're seeing copper make some monster moves, right? We broke out of this nice little tight pattern here. We consolidated and flagged and we just ripped even higher today. And you would think that this is going to be pretty inflationary. So this whole bump in the road narrative, it is a little concerning. So we really got to see what that data brings and how the Fed responds to it. But rising copper prices can be inflationary. And if we look back, if we look at oil, that's also another one that can drive inflation. And we're seeing this, right? We're pretty low today off about a percent or so, but we've recouped that. And now we're starting to press higher even at, in the current moment. And this right here would tell us that the 10-year yield is probably going higher, energy stocks can go higher and so forth. So those are going to be continue to see some a look for consolidations um, and so forth. Because you know, once they consolidate, once they tighten up, it gives us a little bit better risk to reward. For example, if I look at energy right now, like I'm not going to enter long up here because we do have a CPI data coming out. And if the dollar, you know, if this tanks the dollar, if the dollar, not tanks the dollar, but if the dollar starts ripping on this news, we could have some of this stuff affected perhaps. Now that's copper and oil, but even look at gold. This tells me like, so we have those tensions overseas, the geopolitical stuff between Iran and Israel. And who knows what's to really come, but typically you get a flight to safety in names like oil. And this thing has just been a one-way ticket up, has not stopped, has not consolidated. It's the same thing with uh, silver, right? I'll just pull up SLV. Silver, or I could pull up the futures actually, SI. Silver's also has not consolidated, c continues to kind of rip up higher. So this is, these are going to be names to watch for consolidations. If you're long them, I mean, they're, they're great opportunities to make sure you're updating stops, taking profits if you can, depending on your style of a specific trade. If you look at the weekly time frame, we're seeing some pretty decent sized breakouts there. So it really comes down to time frame on how you plan to uh, trade and hold this stuff. Bitcoin also is another one that broke out today. We did get the official sell signal on Bitcoin. This last week, it closed below the zero line. But in order for it to actually count, we need for the trigger to occur, it needs to price needs to cross below the prior week. So this is the current week. Price would have to come all the way down and cross below the prior week. And it's pretty far off. Now, if we close in a negative rate of change environment again for this next week and it's still on a sell signal, then the stop goes from here up to here. So then we would look for the next week to try to crock below the low of this current week. So we'll see if that is the case. But right now it consolidated it pulled up, it consolidated, got tight, and we started to see the early stages of a breakout. We'll see if that holds any legs there. Now, I'll go on and continue off on some of the various names. I'll go over, I'll just go over like maybe a couple here. I have them in my position monitor. I'm not in these specific names, but there are some that are looking pretty good. And I'm going to cut it off after maybe one. Um, I'll talk about VKTX, okay, because this is one that I'm looking to play uh, if, if it plays out right. But then I'll talk about some more of them that are been on my tight list and that I'm going to save that. I'm going to upload that video just to the Discord for the, the members, okay? If you're interested in checking that out, I only charge nine bucks a month and I give a bunch of different data points there and get my updated watch list, tight list and so forth. And I talk about it on my live streams and I talk about some of it here, but, you know, for a small for a small amount for nine bucks a month, you can get or even less that you just pay the year, you can get access to all the other stuff too. And when I send it out, but VKTX, this is interesting because I'm seeing some uh, various uh, biotech stocks, right, starting to tighten up. And I think that that might be an opportunity. If I look at like XBI, you can see it's made a strong move. And now we have an inside trading day. And I like these inside trading days. We've broken some of these averages, but they're rather neutral. The short term's not, but a pop maybe could be a possibility. So when I pull up VKTX, Right, this is just like one example, but you can see here we made a huge strong move over here, consolidated, and, you know, another huge strong move. And now price action is getting pretty tight within this area. So not only do we have an inside trading candle, but also price action has been coming coming in. But pay attention to the volume. What's the volume doing here too, right? A strong hit on volume here to the upside. And then since that point, volume has been drying up, almost disappearing completely. So this tells me price action that's getting tight, volume that's getting tight. When things contract, they eventually expand. So how you look at this is, hey, if we start breaking above the high of this candle, that could be an early entry and you can have a stop below the 20 day moving average. You can have it below the low of this current daily candle. You can have it below the low of the prior daily candle, this little flag pattern here. And then you're just risking, you know, a small amount, right? Well, I, okay. 
it's a, it's a high beta name. So you want to really manage your risk there. But so this little move from breaking the high of this candle to the low is, uh, you know, almost minus 6%. If it was just the low of this last candle, a very tiny range candle, we're talking minus 4%. So in terms of that, right, I'm not going to take a full size position if I know that my stop can be hit very quickly and it'd be down 6% already. I typically will have to beta adjust that position to go from there. So that, you know, that's one of the names that I'm looking at. I'm looking at XBI, like I previously stated. I'm going to go ahead now and 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 just call it quits there and I'm going to upload the second half of this video to the Discord group. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and be sure to uh, uh, turn on notifications because I do go live as well here on YouTube. And then I also on other platforms like Twitch and X as well.